Hello and welcome and welcome to Eid Witness. I'm here on Market Street, but I'm looking to the north. That's the theme of this. Actually, my first video recorded entirely in a vlog style. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to find, but I'm looking to go into the northern part of the central area, visiting uh, Angel Meadow and um, around Victoria Station, uh, because there's some new development going on there. Uh, some of the people in the comments have mentioned it. So let's walk along now. I can already see one building that's of interest. In fact, we've got two tall buildings there. Can you see them? One built in 1962 and one completed only a year or so ago. We make our way along the high street following the tram and the first thing that stands out is this relatively small but striking glass tower. This is Glassworks, offering flexible working spaces. The exterior is just pure glass. It was designed by John Matthews Architects, who did the, I think, very impressive Brazenose House, which I featured previously. There was some controversy at the planning stage. People objected to the addition of a tall glass building into the traditional late 19th century northern quarter Originally, it was intended to house flats, and then at the planning stage, the use was changed to workspaces. The developers have made a feature of the magnificent 1920s facade, once part of a bottle factory, though I seem to remember they were originally going to demolish it. Our next building is on the corner of Rochdale Road in Swan Street. Let's look back to an earlier stage of construction, when only the concrete core had appeared. I find it amazing how buildings slowly take shape over an extended time. This is Swan House by Simpson Hoare Architects. As stated on their website, it's a high quality residential development. But shouldn't every residential development be high quality and not low quality? It has 373 apartments, including some affordable housing in two towers of 32 and 14 storeys connected by a six-story plinth. They've used faux brick cladding on the exterior. Faux, F-A-U-X, is the French for false. So that the new tower echoes the nearby industrial era buildings, which are made out of real bricks. Previously, I photographed those two buildings on Swan Street that look like old New York facades. Now, the new building towers above them. It's an interesting contrast. Those facades are precious and need to be renovated. On the information boards, they have referenced the previous industrial use of the site. Following World War I, ruins are noted within Cable Street's vicinity, where recorded buildings disappear from historical mapping, indicating bomb strikes. Hmm, interesting. Between the mid 19th century and into the 20th century, Cable Street was used for residential dwellings throughout the Industrial Revolution. Very interesting, there should be info like this on all building sites. On Miller Street we have Manchester's first skyscraper, the CIS Tower, still one of my favourite buildings in Manchester. It was designed by Gordon Tate and G.S. Hay and was inspired by the magnificent Inland Steel Building in Chicago, designed by Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. I saw it and photographed it when I was in Chicago in 2018. The CIS Tower is currently empty. It was sold and has been renamed Society. There are ambitious renovation plans, but I can find no dates or timescales. Our next building welcomes us at the bottom of Miller Street. This is New Vic, housing one, two and three bedroom luxury apartments for rent. Designed by Shepard Robson, the distinguished architectural practice, founded in 1938. In the TV comedy Blackadder, Percy said there were strange things happening in the land. Why only yesterday, he said, I saw a horse with two heads and eight legs. But Blackadder replied, you mean two horses standing side by side? Well, that's a bit like this building. Actually, it's two buildings standing side by side, forming a continuous wall. Somewhere behind it is Victoria Station. This is the view from the other side in 2005. Now we're standing with our backs to New Victoria, looking up Miller Street. On the right, CIS and New Century Hall. On the corner, 4 Angel Square. And let us pause to remember the venerable Ducey Bridge Pub. And on the left, built in 1906, 
by Bradshaw and Gas Architects. This was the head office of the CIS. But what are those towers in the distance? There's an interesting view south, but no, we need to keep heading north to a very special place, St. Michael's Flags and Angel Meadow. Once a churchyard and burial ground, now a park surrounded by new and recent apartment developments. And I'm here in Angel Meadow Park. In the background, we can hear the bell. I think that's St. Chad's Roman Catholic Church on Cheatham Hill Road. If you can imagine this area here, where the grass is, covered in the very dark flagstones, which got very wet uh, in the rain, uh, quite slippery. But in the late 1990s, they disappeared. And then the churchyard was completely transformed into the park that we can see today. St. Michael's Church was situated at the far end of the site and it was drawn by Ellis Lowry and demolished in the 1930s. When I first came here, these steps were dilapidated, practically falling apart. I made a great photo though. Since then, they've been fully renovated. And from here, you can go up the steps and into Angel Meadow Park. And this is one of the information boards of which there are quite a few around the park. And I'm very proud to say that my photograph, which I took back in 1998, has been reproduced at fairly large size. And there's the credit there. And ultimately, credit is due to the Friends of Angel Meadow for helping to modernise the park and for installing these information boards, so we don't forget. And so, from a murky past, let's look into a shiny future, heralded by these new towers. A new apartment development is under construction on the German-sounding Danzig Street, which stretches from the Arndale Centre on Shude Hill, past the CIS and up along the River Irk. To me, this new construction project is totally unexpected. It's like a dream. I can't quite believe it's real and that I'm actually looking at it. If 120 years ago, or even 20 years ago, you said that in the future, gleaming glass towers with luxury apartments would be built in Angel Meadow and Red Bank, people would think that you'd be drinking too much of the Irish liquor poutine, once very popular around here. But now is the site of one of Manchester's plushest apartment complexes, and they're looking to attract international buyers. I found this sales page in German. I'll translate. Choice of apartments with one, two, and three bedrooms. Estimated rental yield up to 7%. Flagship development at the forefront of the biggest renewal of the north lying between the green of the city river park and the hectic uh, streets of the city center victoria riverside accommodates 634 new flats and townhouses in the up and coming or you could translate it as aspirational city district of red bank hold on let me just pinch myself no i'm not dreaming architects are hawkins brown the City River Park is part of the Northern Gateway project. This very nice, uncredited drawing has been used for publicity and gives us an impression of the project. I'll feature the Northern Gateway project in another video. We're in Victoria Station and I'm about to take the train to Liverpool for a photo tutorial. There's Victoria Riverside. It's 580 metres or 1900 feet from this spot. And panning to the right, we can see the magnificent new station canopy I captured when it first opened in 2015. You could still see the CIS tower. And by the way, the name of this video was inspired by the brilliant 1970 debut album Northern Dream by visionary musician and guitarist Bill Nelson, founder of Bebop Deluxe. Bill Nelson is from Wakefield in Yorkshire, one hour and 20 minutes from here by train, assuming no delays. So what's it to be? Northern Dream? or Northern Nightmare. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. Whatever your views, I don't mind, as long as it's courteous and respectful. Long and wordy is good, preferably properly spelt. To support this channel with a donation, go to www.kofi.com slash aidenywitness or buymeacoffee.com slash aidenywitness. And so from Victoria, it's vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in der Boomstadt Manchester.